while we've done research on a number of different topics, probably the area where we've made the most progress and most impact is with microneedle technology. The microneedles that we've worked on have taken two forms. One of them is the solid microneedle. So this is a patch with an array of solid microneedles that contain the drug either on or within them and enables patients to easily self-administer a drug or a vaccine uh, in a way that would be hard to do with the hypodermic needle. The other kind of microneedle that we've done work on is the hollow microneedle. So that's much like a hypodermic needle, but scaled down sub-millimeter in length. And while we've done work there in the skin, our, our greater efforts have been in drug delivery to the eye, where the hollow microneedle, it's not painless, it's not self-administered, but it has a very nice targeting ability to target a part of the eye called the suprachoroidal space. I would offer two pieces of advice. One of them is to identify important questions. So advice given to me a long time ago was that there are many people who are good at figuring out the answers to scientific questions, but the ones who make the greatest impact are the ones who know which of the scientific questions is the important one to ask. So spend some time thinking about where's the impact? Is this just some something interesting that I'm able to do? Or is it something that if I can do it, can make a real difference in medicine? And oftentimes that's gonna require an interdisciplinary approach, a collaborative approach, because to solve the really tough problems, usually we can't do it alone as individuals. It takes multiple inputs to be successful. The second piece of advice that I'd offer is to minimize risk but to take risk. So if you want to have a translational emphasis, if you do something that's totally new and crazy and speculative, uh, I mean, maybe it will, it will have a translational impact, but probably uh, you want to balance that with something that has a lower risk that you see how it can eventually get to a translation. But of course it should be something new if you really want to make a difference. And so a moderate level of risk, I think is the right way. I've had a number of, of influences over my career. I, I started out working at Alza Corporation. That was my introduction to drug delivery and Ronald Hack and Rick Guyry were my, my mentors who were there. In graduate school, I was co-advised by Bob Langer and, and Jim Weaver, and they very much influenced my perspective on science, the perspective on taking on bold questions and taking some risks to, to try to answer them. Uh, after my, my PhD work, I, I did have some interaction, spent some time in the laboratory of Richard Guy and also Chris Cullender, who really gave me a, a detailed introduction to the, the broader field of transdermal drug delivery and I think has influenced things. In graduate school, I shared a lab bench with Samir Mitragotri and he and I have continued to, to be friends and, and followed each other and he does work related to ours and I think is uh, very, very clever and, and often gives me some inspiration. And finally, in, in the newer generation, Jen Gu uh, has entered into the, the field of transdermal delivery and has brought a, a very fresh perspective and, and inspires me in terms of, of that next generation of researchers. Well, I, I think about transdermal drug delivery really as having three generations. The first generation is the, the passive patch, the kind of patches that are in widespread use today. And I think that's made huge impact. There are uh, millions of people every day who are using transdermal patches and it's helping them. The second generation, I think, is the more advanced technologies, things like ionophoresis or, or ultrasound or advanced chemical formulations that are able to not just make drugs that otherwise cross the skin uh, pretty good, do it well enough to, to be a patch, but can make a really major impact in terms of the amount of drug delivered or the size and characteristics of the molecules delivered. I think a lot of those technologies have really been inspirational for the field, but I, I also think that many of them have not ultimately been able to be translated because of complexity associated with their approach, involvement of a device, for example. And so uh, I, I think these second generation approaches have not had as much impact. 
Now the third generation is one that also uses some advanced technologies, but I think the key inspiration there is to have a mechanism that is really well targeted to the stratum corneum barrier without causing damaging effects to the deeper layers of skin. And that's ultimately the balance we are always trying to achieve. We want to do a lot to the stratum corneum to get drug delivery to occur, but we don't want to do things below. And when you put chemicals on the skin, they go into the stratum corneum, but they continue lower. Likewise, electric fields or, or ultrasound, various, various methods that have been developed don't sufficiently constrain the effects to stratum corneum. Now, I obviously have a bias towards microneedles as being of interest, and I think one of the reasons why microneedles can be successful is because they do really limit and focus the effects, not admittedly only to stratum corneum, but they target stratum corneum in a very aggressive way, making micron-sized holes, but minimize effects deeper down. And, and there are other, other kinds of approaches that have that kind of a, a targeted method as well, and I think that's what really has the promise as the third generation for the future. We have done work in the area of microneedles, but what I think is particularly exciting and, and the, the, the greater contribution to science is that many others have joined into this field. If you look at the number of, of people who have published papers on microneedles, there are literally thousands of people who have been authors or co-authors on papers about microneedles. There are hundreds of, of academic labs and industry labs that have published papers or that have patents on microneedles. So there's a core group of investigators who are really focused on that topic. But I think what's particularly exciting is how broad the impact has been. That so many other research groups that may not have microneedles as their expertise, but have, have been interested, inspired by that technology, the, the core group has made that technology accessible to others by developing technologies that, that uh, people without the expertise can nonetheless use and, and learn from. And so my, my hope is that by building a community that is, is really broad, we can get contributions from so many different people, so many different ideas that it, it can help the field progress.